Episode 5, Season 2 of the Yellow Tape Podcast. I am Deuce Wing. The only reason I want to switch up my uh, intros because I was on the game my brothers a couple of nights ago. And they were saying, your intro sounds very white. And you'd be like, this is Deuce Wing in the Yellow Tape Podcast. So you know what? I said, you know what? <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> and I'm going to change it. So I'm just going to start talking. And that's how it's going to work. It's going to be, it's gonna be just randomly just start. So it's like, so DW, that's me. <laughs> And then obviously, cause I might as well say he's a consistent co-host. I guess you might as well say that now. Fikes, <clears throat> you've been here for, for all of them except for like one. As far as the yellow tape goes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to go back on the other one. I, I gotta get a personal invitation from my sis. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. You know what? You should like take my spot and it'd be that would be hilarious. I will, I will pay to watch that. Let me be y'all producer. No, I don't think I, I don't. I don't <laughs> think I could be a a moderator. No, you're not. You're not gonna be a moderator. That would definitely be. That definitely gonna. One thousand percent. He's naturally. Yeah, but you don't. You don't talk a lot. I know. But you know what? But you I are know. right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. See, I, 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 could, I acknowledge when I'm wrong. I'm telling you, bro. You should think about it. Let me manage you. <laughs> Maybe. I think it'd be dope. I think. Because to be honest, that response that we got from that the last time we got that, a couple weeks before, <clears throat> when BMO was like on our pre-pro tales thing, that's a behind the scenes uh, series that we do. And, uh, okay. That was when they was talking about they had the corona. They had the Rona and they was talking about it. And that's the last time we had like a, a huge response from people like, you know, saying respond to it like, oh, da, 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 da. so that happened again two weeks later when you came on. That's when you came on there. And it was like, <laughs> and then that bled over. Good contract. It was good. It's good. I think that might have took us to over 50 subscribers on the channel, which is crazy when you think about it. It's crazy. Thank y'all for that. But <clears throat> I want to switch up the concept of the LT podcast because I know it's going to be about music. And don't worry, it probably will be. Music is always a part of that. But <clears throat> I was thinking about how, well, how I vision this podcast, right? And I like, what am I? What's the end game here? Why am I doing it? And I know I said a couple episodes ago that I'm doing this as like therapy, which is true. Which is true. But it's kind of like me doing podcasts is like a it's like a hobby. It's like a hobby. It's kind of like people who um like rocket engineers who they collect Pokemon cards. You know, it's just something that's like, it's just something that I do that takes some, it takes time, you know, it's time consuming, but I love doing it. Yeah, but it, but it's not, it's not, it's not far removed from what you do already. Yeah, but it's like, but it's not what I do. If you, if you break it down to it as core, it's not really what I do. Like, actually, what I do right now, okay. I'm, I'm a CEO of a management company and I manage artists and producers and entertainers all together, video producers, whatever. Like, that is right now. That's far removed from me talking for two hours and then editing the video and doing it, you know, my thing, you know, producing. So, it's a stretch, but yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Really? I don't is think that, so. Well, well, because you're still, you're still in the entertainment business. This is still considered to be entertaining, right? But I don't, I'm not doing I mean, it. I'm not music. doing it for entertainment. I guess you get what I'm saying. But but that's what, yeah. But that's what it is. 
like if, if you had to categorize this as a way of, of income mm -hmm. what would it be like when you go to get you know get this license that's like the thing i don't i don't it to get i don't them. i don't, don't want to do that yeah but you never know like that might be an offer yeah of you, course you might, of course if might, it if it takes off and do what it's supposed to do then yeah but i'm not doing that for that i i feel like a, i feel like how can i quit this? i, I like, think what you're about to say is if it gets to that point you would reach out to me or or gonzo or you, you would reach out to somebody else to take it over to where you're more so like maybe uh like um like a guest appearance or something like that like you started it mm. and you you en you envisioned it to be something big or something different um, i'm trying to trying to think of a not no but, a good example but that's the reason why but that reason right there is is about why i left the life podcast so if people want to know like why is the yellow tape starting back or what happened with that what's going with life podcast that has nothing to do with that but let me get out what i mean by that first and we can transition to that you know <clears throat> okay okay and well, i will get to the premise of I this podcast gonna be, yeah i know but i still want to okay. get to that but i just want to get to you I'm, this is the whole part of why i'm kind of switching it up <clears throat> so all tying together I'm not in this for the money. I'm not in this to be the most viewed thing on YouTube. I'm not in this to be the most listened to thing on Spotify. I'm not in for that. I, I do that because I look at it like an artist who makes music. You know? I look at it like that. I like who's kind of one of those people. Like, I guess you say like I'm like a backpack podcaster or whatever. Like that. I do it for the love of it. I do it because I like, I like for once a week, I can sit for two hours. Sometimes three, because we had all the content and shit, all the bullshit we said before and afterwards. But um, to, at least, <laughs> at least for two hours, I can sit back and kind of get out some shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not necessarily what I'm talking right, about right. is why I need to get out. It's just that maybe it's just the stress. So it's kind of like for me to release and just talk about something like to me to rant about how you know I think that the Falcons are. They don't give a fuck about us, the fans. They're like, I love to just sit and talk about this shit. Why should we get rid of Matt Ryan? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and not Trey Julio. And shit like that. I like, oh, I love talking about hip hop and why Eminem is not the greatest storyteller in hip hop. I like debating that shit. I like talking, like, I was going to change this. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to, I ain't going to step on your toes. That's, I'm going to let you That's rock. not what I was going to talk about, though. But, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I'm, you can add it to that. Um, <clears throat> But I was thinking about because of that, it's because I don't want to call it therapy because I don't want it to seem like I'm like going through it because I'm really in a good space, you know what I'm saying? Like mentally, right. and, you know, financially, I might, but and, you know what I'm saying? But it's not where I want to be, obviously. But <clears throat> I'm doing, I'm doing good. So I do this because I, was, I want to write a book about my life, but. If I wrote about everything going on in my life, it's going to be like a fucking series. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be like a Lord of the Rings series or like a prequel. And it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not doing it. I'd rather just do it one time and then get to talk about the big important stuff. But the in-between stuff, that's what this is for. And I don't want it to become something where it's oh. like people, like people who become fans of it is going to be like, oh, well, I listened to this because I know or he's gonna sign this 200 million dollar deal with spotify just for this shit you know what i'm saying i'm just being facetious say it probably whatever um <clears throat> whatever it's my bad I can get speaking, text speaking into existence no i'm just saying I, it's cool like you know what i'm saying i'm I, but that's not my goal i'm just doing this so i can talk and to the people that needs to hear what i'm saying they'll get it because like i get those messages when they be like oh yeah i feel you in this and blah, blah, blah. Or, like or i say a joke and they be like oh like i understand that or like when I was really going through it, there was like, um, <clears throat> he was like, um, people hit me up and it was like, damn, are you going through it? Like, BMO, matter of fact, I was on the podcast and I was like, I don't know why I didn't think she was watching her wife as a co host. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I was, I was talking and like, like Tony and <laughs> Gonzo was not getting it and I was just not feeling it. And, but I, you know, I put on that face and I just, you know, made my little joke or whatever, but I was not feeling it. You can tell, like, as I go back and look at the episode and I remember being she watched it and she hit me up. She was like, are you good? And I was just like, 
nah. And I was like, how'd you know? She was like, I was watching. I was like, I'm really watching the podcast. And you just don't look like something going on. What's up? And we would just talk. So <clears throat> I look at it for like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? There've been people who watch my shit and they be like, going to do something completely different. But the, me talking about a certain thing and me being vulnerable and bringing up certain shit whether I get trouble or not or whatever, it opens them up to come to me about it because I'm putting myself out there where I, when I fucking, the 10th episode of the Light Podcast, I was defending Trump. You know what I'm saying? I was putting out things that he actually did do. Yeah. But it was it came out, it came out, the reason why I did that is because the guest we had on there, all right, so that was one of our first guests we ever had. And Hagen was coming over there, right? And she never said it. She never said anything to me before. But I oh God, I, 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 she was gonna be a guest, and Carnage was gonna be on there. It was Carnage. This was Ant was on there. It was Gonzo, or whatever. Ant doesn't. When it comes to politics, he doesn't have no opinion. Like he's going. I think he's conservative, but he just don't want to admit to it. But anyway, so yeah, I didn't. I knew she was gonna be. I know how she was, and I didn't want her to be by herself. So what I was, I was gonna be the okay. sacrificial lamb, and it's like, well, let me go look up some things he said he did that he actually did, and then I said like three of them, and then that's when Gonzo was like, we sound like <laughs> Uncle Ruckus, and, and you know what I'm saying, and that turns like, but see the thing is the conversations I have with people who saw that, where did they just took it out of context or not? Like that's the shit I live for because uh, those conversations were dope. Where did they it was like, what the fuck you talking about? You Trump supporter? I was like, no, like. This, you know, I didn't tell him why I did it. Like I'm telling everybody now. I only told Gonzo. Yeah, you're the devil's advocate. Yeah, I was just trying to. I didn't want her to be by herself. I was trying to be a good friend. So that's the reason why I fucking looked up. I kind of remember that one. I got to go back and watch that one. That's one of the early ones, man. That's one of the early ones. No, she, she, I. So I will. I, hopefully you never catch me doing this. Mm-hmm. I so M is like been my ongoing thing on here or whatever. But he's not even like my favorite MC of all time. Right. But just for the sake of staying um, consistent, mm-hmm. if I'm sitting here saying that M is like the uh, the best storyteller for me, and then you bring up a bunch of facts, and you know that like I'm somebody just gonna go along with facts, mm-hmm. but I'm still sitting up here saying that M is still the best, but you can bring up like, he only got this many stories. And then all these other people got this many stories and they sold way more. Mm-hmm. Like if you did that and I'm like, and you know that I'm be like, damn, okay, yeah, you gotta, all right, I can change my mind on this. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. She won't do that. <laughs> she will defend that man to the end of the fucking earth. And then when you, and then when he does something and it's like, it's obvious, like this whole thing that just happened over the weekend, mm-hmm. Well, just because I voted for him doesn't mean I support him. That's the very definition of voting for somebody because you support. Him. Yeah, but see, all right. So this is a great. This, but, is, a, but, this is a great and, transition. I, I like this. I like this conversation because I've had conversation, prior conversations with her. I won't disclose uh, all details or any details right, of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I can give you the premise of them, and we have multiple. And I think you know what. After those conversations with her and a few other people that kind of shocked me, um, I kind of the people that I knew that I look at, I look at, I respect them. Whether they, we don't necessarily agree as far as politics, but we're cool mm-hmm. everywhere else. So it's like I respect them. You know, what I'm saying it's just that it's like yeah. you know. So I look at them when they when they support a politician. It's like when they supported him. I was just like, I thought you. That would, it kind of made me mad because those the ones I was just like I thought you had common sense I thought you was smart I thought you like facts like mm-hmm. regardless of like the shit that we disagree on or like minor compared to he doesn't stand for any of that shit that you talking about you know right. so that's why I started getting frustrated but it wasn't that it was just those those multiple we had to have multiple conversations and um that's how I ended up getting her on the podcast. Because it was just one of those things like, you know, you post stuff and then she just saw it and I guess you know how she is, you know what I'm saying? She's just like, hey, but we cool. Like we never had beef and that like that. You know what I'm saying? She was just like, Look, man, like I seen you posting this stuff, like help me, you know what I'm saying? Like what like you know what I'm saying? We just got into the debating. You know what I'm saying? Like she was trying to understand mm-hmm. me and I was trying to understand her. And I think it's a great conversation because we 
out of all the times we said we talked, we talked about everything but that. But it's like we knew where we each other stood on certain talking points. Policy. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it was like it's like like before before you left Hawaii. Yeah. So yeah. we was all like we was always cool. Like I said, she was never she's never been shy about her views. But I, I started being nah. like, I, I started <laughs> yeah, for real. But yeah, like now her. now her shit's changed if you notice, because it's like it's certain things that she'll down the hill of. Cause I think with them is they really are hung up. I'm not, I not hate to say hung up on because I don't want to make it seem like they're like sheep. Cause they get offended. Like, but for lack of a better words, they get hung up on the whole drain in the swamp thing. They don't trust politicians. And the whole thing right, right, about right. being conservative is to have less government, smaller government. They feel like, hey, right. but I can get it by my bootstraps. I don't need the government's help. I don't need the government telling me what I can do, trying to take this from me. You're there to whatever it is, not tax me and do whatever the hell I tell you. Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? And I'm paraphrasing and all you conservative people you can get mad, but I'm just obviously you, you know I fuck, fuck with y'all. But those are interesting conversations to have. They are very interesting. <laughs> but it took me a while to get there. I didn't get there just off rip it literally it like it took some heated conversations I'm not saying necessarily with her i'm just talking about with the people who had those who shared those same views who i they mm. they kind of air themselves as a person of intellect and be like oh put your fa- get your facts straight da, 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 but yet they're a maggot you know what i'm saying so it's like you know right i, I had to have these conversations so i don't know but I, that's how i look at it now so now but to be honest, those people that I had those conversations with and I end up seeing, not seeing the light, but understanding their perspective of it, it's because... Yeah, yeah. Because, like, especially... Now, like, I can honestly like, say... Especially now. Go like, ahead. You just look, I mean, just saying, look at the way things now. Um, but before, I'm going to go ahead and clear out the whole intro to a little quick shit, because I know I got away from it, but you got to remember. Kush. Shout out to the blog. So... <laughs> the premise of it is that it's going to be about music majority of the time. That's what my life, that's my career, like that's my love, my first love. So it's going to be about music, y'all, obviously. But it's going to be about just like just smoke pit talk. Like how I used to be in smoke pit in Hawaii. Like everywhere I went to, there was a certain spot you go to where everybody kick it and we had all these conversations. It was like that at Fort Stewart. It was like that at smoke pit in Hawaii. It was like that smoke pit in fucking Fort Hood. So if you think I'm lying, ask all my soldiers, they would tell you it was always a spot yeah. where I'd be at and we had these inter- interesting ass conversations. So that's what the yellow tape is going to be. So it's just going to be those crazy conversations. So we could be talking about aliens and this first half and then talk about pussy in the next one you never know stay tuned <laughs> so with that being said that'd be fun <laughs> yeah cause that's what it is man it's just cause the thing is like the whole flip for yellow tape like you think about like caution you think yellow tape but I put an actual yellow tape cassette because the music I fuck with music but what you're listening to right. is cause I have some old school views you know some I think I have a little maybe I have yeah. a couple um, but I figure old school. You're progressive that, in your choice of music. I would say that. You know what's crazy? I was so scared last year because I thought I was, I was slowly becoming like a black Republican, and then I realized that. I am no, no, I'm saying for music. No, but, it's, no, okay. no, no. I get you saying it. it just t- it, oh, it's taking me. Oh, okay. there. It's the weed, bro. It's the weed. It's taking me there. Um. Say y'all getting this exclusive 20 minutes into the podcast, people. You're welcome. So I was so scared that I was a fucking slowly becoming a black Republican. Only because the Democrats are pissing me off. Like a lot. And then once Bernie backed out, I was I was super pissed. Um, I didn't like that a lot. But anyway, not to talk about politics. But I was like, damn, but then I thought about it, I was like, bro, I'm really more progressive than I think. There's a lot of things, yeah. it's just like I don't care. Let them have it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care. Like, nah, but the thing is, like, I don't want, I don't want it. I don't think we need gun control. I think we should, I think what we really need is, like I said, I don't want to make this political. I think we need, uh, now I was about to say, you, you more. You, you, I, I think they, they probably saw my eyes drop. Yeah. <laughs> because here's the thing, because here's the thing, like, 
you can it's one thing to it's one thing to build a nuke it's another thing to actually use it you know what i'm saying so the people that who have to resort to doing that who or just do it willingly with off a whim because maybe something's wrong psychologically and stuff like that i think that's on the person it's not on the necessarily the weapon you know we can't get mad like you know like so i think the vetting process should be more thorough you know i'm not that, saying see, I'll, I'm not, that's all i'm saying i'm not saying, saying not control but you do believe in regulation like no, it should be regulated I, a little better i look at it like, I look at it, it's like that's what you basically that's what you're about to say because it's more tough to get very it's more tough to get verified on only fans than it is to get a gun right <laughs> so right it's more tough to get i mean i wouldn't know but I'm on twitter here. or twitter or instagram whatever than it is to get a gun to get in the south i'll say in the south right okay cool so i'm not putting the blame thing so these people if you notice especially in the south where ev- almost everybody know own a gun and the ones you think don't have a gun have a gun and it's probably in their car you know it's kind of like it's kind of different at places that kind of have like high gun regulations and that i think that's more gun crimes in those places than places that are pro gun you know what i'm saying and i'm not saying like the like for instance i'm not saying the state of georgia's gun verification process or whatever like that i'm not saying it's like the super tight like nsa should use it now like no i'm just saying like it should be a more thorough type of vet you know what i'm saying it should be within reason yeah just across the board just across the board just has the type of federal man not man there's something in there that says hey let's do a little bit of digging deeper like this motherfucker was buying um hydrochlorified or whatever shit that is two days yeah, before right, right. you know what i'm saying like let's be a little smart about it you know? so i'm playing devil's advocate because i do believe we i'm not saying get rid of all guns but there needs to be basically what you're saying better vetting mm-hmm. and i believe some better regulations because it's just like i one thing that i don't agree with is why do you want to silence it like the only people that need a silencer is criminal. But I like don't, if, like if you're you, looking like at, you your you're looking for, at for what something. it is. They're looking at it as like it's just an well, attachment. No, no. The, then I mean, you should need a hundred round clip then, or a thirty. You should need like a yeah. I'm, I'm I'm with that. You're with that too. I'm with those things though. I don't know, bro. I look but, at, that, but that's what I'm saying. So but, yeah. But look, I just I just look at it as like what it used to be, and then where we how we got to where we are now, and just yeah. like. At some point, it has to stop. Like, no, I like too many like weapon companies are designing more and more guns. that are designed to like flip out of your fucking backpack and be a full, yeah, um, assault rifle. Right. So it's just like, well, why the fuck do you need a fully compactable assault rifle? Like, I and so, go ahead again. So it's just like for the people, for, for the people, I think like they're marketing it to, like the, the top one percent should be like security. Like like legit security companies, I get that. Mm-hmm. But the biggest, the, the people that's really buying into it is like everyday American. So I just feel like, all right, we can't like, we can't sit up here and say all of the gun violence and all of the mass shootings that's happened that having those type of weapons, still, those individuals would have been able to do that with a handgun. There's no way you're going to be able to kill 50 people with a handgun. 30 people with a handgun yeah like but i mean not, um, but not, not unless you obviously but i that's when i'm one of the people that how i look at things the only time i apply the exception and not the rule is when it benefits me in the argument right mm-hmm. i'm just like no don't let know something about me right in this thing in this case i feel like you using the exceptions as a, to a way to support it and a lot of people and a lot of people do a lot of people support this a lot of people who want that stuff like and i'm not saying i'm against it because like at the end of the day i I get it i understand like joe or let's say joe johnson who stays in nebraska doesn't need a silencer and a hundred round drum and a, a automatic assault rifle right it's no coyotes or any any wolf or anything's gonna fuck with his flock that's gonna that he's gonna need that for 
um unless right. he lives by bears and i'm all for it like anyone who lives near bears yeah. Last should be season. allowed should be allowed to have assault rifles automatic they should have saws in my opinion the motherfuckers are like yeah yeah you need no something. no you need a bigger bullet than that yeah you need something. that's just a that's a, a fucking super powered t- uh 22 <laughs> yeah you need that automatic <laughs> automatic sawed off shit that terry cruz had in the expendables but no i'm just saying like i get that i get that. I, I understand that but all right so you're saying for the one percent for the one percent but no right, the so, security right i, I kind of get I, that but let's say yeah but i got i got off but let's no say, I'm, I'm sorry i didn't mean to go that deep into it yeah because my my whole thing is it's the same thing with masks it's one of those where does my freedoms end and your rights begin or vice versa and i think like that's the discussion that needs to be had outside of trying to pinpoint you know silencers the size of magazines the the fucking butt stock can't be a butt stock and all of those like well no like all right well what are uh, my rights i know and, I, and your I, freedoms begin i get what you're saying but i don't i don't want i don't agree with that i, don't, I think like damascus and whether we should be allowed to purchase silencers and honey round drums i think they're two completely different things that's just me personally um no 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 what, what i'm saying is what i'm saying is like I should be free to do what I want to do. I should be free to go into any store without having to wear a mask. I should be free to put any type of attachments on my weapons that I want. Okay, well, I have the right not to feel endangered because you're not wearing a mask. I should have the right not feeling endangered if you cut me off in traffic that you're going to hop out with a fucking fully automatic fucking 762 type of uh, assault weapon. Right. right like like i should have that right to, to 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 be and feel safe in both scenarios that's that's how i'm like trying to connect those two and it's like a multitude of things it's just like that's one of those issues with yeah. with america it's just like you want your freedoms but you want to be free by saying fuck someone else's right and it's just like well you can't do that Essentially, like, what you're you saying was saying that we shouldn't it. have silencers and they should only be for security. Isn't it exactly the same thing? If you think about it, because because yeah, you so feel what, you, what you don't feel safe, but you feel like the the overall American community is in danger with silencers and automatic rifles being at anyone's disposal. That's depending on those people's rights mm-hmm. who do have it. Like and like I said, that's why I was calling back to the exception and not in instead of the rule. Majority of people who own automatic assault rifles are not going around killing people. It's just that happenstance, like plane crashes, right? How many people die from plane crashes? It's not that much, but everybody's so scared to get on the fucking plane. In but, America, but they hop in, in America, car, but they hop in a car, and they and they'll get more in there. People die from cars. Yeah, and more people die from cars. Or how about this? Hey, we should legalize uh, cannabis because you can't drive when you do nothing. Stuff, da, da, da. But guess what? We got bars everywhere. We got. It's fucking Budweiser ads and Super Bowl commercials. Drinking is okay as long as you're I, 21. I got two DUIs. How many people have been killed because of fucking drinking and driving? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like at one point, I just feel like the same way that I apply when it comes to my arguments, I think the people do the same thing. Like, they take that exception and they drive that home. And because a lot of people agree with it, doesn't necessarily mean that's right. And that's the great thing about America is because... The one thing I can say about that, as far as like the conservatives would, because like if it's something that they strongly believe in and they feel like no, like the other side is not really bitching about it, they just won't. They're like, hey, leave all enough alone. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think it was kind of great because um somebody was saying this. I don't so know if Aaron. I don't know if it's like Aaron Foster. Excuse me. Um, my bad. Let me cut you off. I don't know if it was Aaron Foster or what. It might have been him. But he was saying what what he noticed about um conservatives and liberals is that liberals is kind of like we're fine if it ain't broke don't break it you know what I'm saying let's just everything's good as it is we don't need that where liberals looking at is like what can we do better how can we get better it's not sufficient you know what I'm saying like just taking it going zero to 100 on, on I feel like that's more progressive like I feel like I progressives are always liberal pushing is, to make liberal things is better. progressive though. Yeah. Liberal is very progressive. No. They, they might be similar, 
but they're not the same because it's two different words. Literally. I, I gotta in, say that. in a political you know sense. Li- liberal means sure. Yeah, no, but like I wouldn't sit up and say that I'm liberal. I'm more progressive. You don't right? I, just you like, wouldn't say you that. Say, you wouldn't say that, but everybody in the whole room and anyone you you, you say that to, they're gonna think, okay, if you say I'm a liberal, they're gonna think you're more progressive. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna be like, oh, okay. Not saying you're all the way but fucking like, progressive, all the way progressive, because honestly, we you know liberal is not that, because they wouldn't be no such thing as liberal if they if they was completely progressive, right? They have their conservative ways about the shit that they believe in. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, liberals, liberals do. Yeah, liberals do. Yeah, yeah liberals do. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. that's what that's what, that's what separates. That, that's, that's what all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want to get hung up on that because like see, hey, so it. see, they're not they're not the same thing. See. Either way, yeah. But I was saying that's not the same. Mask is not the same thing as having a silencer, bro. I just don't. That's that's crazy. Cause like here's the thing with that. These people, these places that people get mad at, um, they be like, oh, it's a public institution. No, they're not. Someone owns that motherfucker. So whoever owns that motherfucker, if they say, hey, someone ain't nobody coming in unless they got a mask on. That's just what it is. Go somewhere else where they'll let yeah. you in there. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. Right. When it comes to mass shootings and stuff like that, which we haven't had one in a minute, I, I think the last the recent thing was the bomber <laughs> shit. The bomber had thing happened in uh, Baltimore. Yeah, but everybody's been on lockdown. <laughs> it hasn't been like no mass mass things going on besides fucking Trump rallies, bro. Just recently, in cities have been like opening up. I'm in Atlanta. I've been traveling a little bit during that, and I'm pretty sure I, I probably traveled at least down there. A lot of people, so I know for fact people been uh, people been out. They maybe now everybody's broadcasting it. Some people have, but much people talking about oh we've been stuck under. I've seen more people go out more during this whole quarantine thing than like even, <laughs> like than when we was deployed. I can believe. I mean, yeah, like they put on like oh we was in the house, but like now nah, they're going here, they're going there. Like I know, like, like I yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I see videos of back home and it, it's kind of disturbing, but. Yeah, that's my thing. Hey, motherfuckers gotta make money. They want to party. Hey, do you? You take the risk. Yeah. You throw the dice. True. But no, but what I was going to say was like, the majority of Americans actually do want gun, re- uh, not restrictions, but more better, more or better gun control. It's like 70 some percent. Right. But unfortunately, the individuals that love their guns that vote for the people that love their guns that say, yeah, it should be a little harder to get a gun or, yeah, I don't think that, you know what I'm saying, somebody should have a fucking 50 cal sniper or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then they vote for someone that will never bring that bill or bring that vote for everyone to say, yeah, we need to do this to make America safer. Like, I feel like they just vote against their own self-interest. Because it's not that black and white, bro. I think, like, it goes back to the whole Trump support thing. It's like, it's not... I was literally about to say that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally like <laughs> like, that. like like you you voted for Trump, you vote for Trump, but yeah, the whole world got turned on the side on the side of his head because of the pandemic. But America is like one of the worst off because of who we have in charge, and then all of the people below that individual. But you voted for these people to be in charge to take care of you, so you can't sit up here and say I want smaller government. You vote your interests. You get mad though. at the people. You vote your interests. If you if you. That's what if I'm, I'm a conservative, you against yourself in? you're not really because at the same time he was representing the Republican Party. Now it, it'd be different if he was the independent nominee and if he was the third one and he won. Let's say it was Hillary, Romney, and then him. It'd be a whole different thing, you know. Then they have no excuse. But the fact mm-hmm. that he's representing the Republican Party, that he he literally changed it what it is to even be mean to be a Republican in politics now. Well, you know, yeah. he changed it. You know, and there's some. Or, for the worse, yeah, you know, whether for the for better or it doesn't matter. I don't know, but that's a whole claim. That's a whole click thing. But either way, he still supported some of those ideals where it's like, we're not going to take away your guns. The same shit he say, we're not going to take away your guns. We're not going to shut down your coal mines. You know, um, but they, we're but not going to do fracking. I'm against the fracking. Yo, like no, like but they did. I had a soldier when I was here in North Carolina. He's from Kentucky. And one day, like, he was like, just down. 
Mm-hmm. And then the next day he was down. And then like that third morning, like I, I pulled him aside from PT. We didn't do PT, man. We went on a walk. Mm-hmm. And like his whole town is a coal town. And the 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 CEO that owned the coal uh mine or whatever, what did he do? He he shut the mine down over the weekend. Mm-hmm sold it or something like that and then he wanted to take that money to invest it into another business but here it is you have like hundreds of people that work for you not to mention that entire town survives off of those that industry Mm -hmm. he literally just killed a small town in kentucky right and that was like i think he was like the third largest coal mine in in america right and it was just like yo he just shut down and like trump didn't he never said nothing about it he didn't say well do you need more money to stay open you know what i'm saying it's just like no i get it i, I just feel it. like they, they just vote against their and i know that's like a, a anecdotal note or whatever but i just nah, feel man. like they just vote against their self-interest this is I, I don't understand when you you want to feel safe because we're, we're talking about guns you want to feel mm-hmm. safe but in order for you to feel safe you got to go buy a gun right like i don't feel safe because i know everybody out here has a gun and it's just it's just one of those deals it's just like well why don't you put somebody in power that can make it to where you honestly do feel safe like what will make you feel safe as a gun owner bro that now, and i'm not like saying a, to you that sounds like a I'm damn not, no i'm not saying that i'm not that. saying that specifically to you but what i'm saying is no i know what you're saying if you if you love you if you love that if you want to keep your gun to protect your home cool you want to protect your person cool but if like for someone like me the only reason why i I would carry is because i don't feel safe around where i'm at you know i'm saying either if it's in a hood or if i'm in a racist part of the country right i'm I'm being honest on that one so it's just like all right well if you ask me being a gun owner what would make me feel safe what can you do as a representative of gun owners to make Mm -hmm. me feel safe do I think we need to have bigger and badder guns? Mm, no, because that's the whole problem. Like, I don't, I don't believe we need to have more guns to, to feel safe. When we had multiple school shootings, mm. they were talking about putting more guns in a school, and it's like, but that's how the that's how the kids died in the first place. What if a kid gets a teacher's gun? What if the teacher has a bad day and just says fucking and starts shooting up the kids? Yeah, or they just or the, you know what I'm saying like I'm, I'm again I know I'm saying anecdotal things and yeah. there's a lot of what ifs but it's just it's just one of those things where we won't have an honest conversation because it always goes back to it's my right to have a gun and fuck your freedom or vice versa it's so until that. you actually have an honest convers- until you have an honest conversation I mean you you can't one side can't argue over the other one because you're not having an honest what makes conversation. The, what makes my side of it? Um, because I'm all about, I'm all against the whole gun control thing. Like I said, my stance, my stance, like I just look at it like we just need some vetting for it. Um, but what is that's gun control. What makes what makes my side? Because no, because that's what that's what that's what I think. What I'm getting at as far as that's why I feel them is that it's like because you name multiple things where it's like it could be. That's what's so great about this time, right? This is the information Asian. And I love it. But it can also be flipped. Like so we're gonna get we're gonna get back to music. We're gonna get back to music. Oh, we're definitely gonna do it. Like we're just gonna start. We're like halfway into it. Well, we're not even an hour. So <laughs> Yeah, I know I keep saying like we hung up on it. But they say, hey, we need more guns in the school. Yeah, some kid could grab it. Yeah, you know, like okay, yeah, that could happen, right? Right. But like I said, what I said before about beer and cars and planes, like, and yet you still partake in those activities, right? The same thing can be applied. On the flip side of that is if we know there are people out there who have those assault rifles, which kind of helps you in your case, why not have, make sure we can match the firepower, right? Now, do I believe that we should have militaristic, military style weapons? No, because you don't need a military style weapon to kill a deer or whatever you're hunting, right? So as far as I feel like we should have everything up to like a hunter rifle. And that's cool. You know, that's fine. Like you got the shotguns, that's included. Cool. SMGs, LMGs, 
saws, assault rifles. I think that just just let the military had that shit right. So that that's that's gun control. Yeah, I get that, but I think the only thing is is what's gonna mean. It's like it's not gonna be it's not gonna be just that. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be like it's gonna be taken way over that. Because I do feel like that that the the liberals what they do is like on their side is they like to rub it in the, the Republicans' face, the conservatives' face when they especially when they they win something and. They, yeah, they never win. <laughs> they've been winning a lot lately. They've been winning a lot lately. I mean, well, no, yeah. I mean, we got people in Congress, but I'm just saying, like, even the presidencies do. What I think, like, the last what, like, <sighs> but I, I feel like that's the wrong person. I think after Jimmy I feel Carter, like it should have been I think, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, I okay. If you're saying it that way, yeah. But what was so after Jimmy Carter? That's when, when it you comes start to seeing like, more Democrats. I believe. Yeah. 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 And there's only been one Republican that's won the popular vote. I think that it might have been Reagan, I think. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else, they only get in because of the numbers, which is crazy. Electoral college. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, I'm not like I said, I don't I know you want to say on this too long. I'm just saying like you're saying like, oh yeah, that's what it is. You that's like what Jimmy now? Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, no, it's, it's been doing it, but like it'll do it for like a word, and it's like, okay, I know what you was about to say, or oh, okay. I can make sense of it. I don't know if it's like the word suppression. I don't know what's going on with this shit. Um, hold on. Y'all about to see some behind the scenes shit. Or not. <laughs> okay. We'll leave it alone. Because uh, I think it's the voice suppression thing. So I think if I speak too loud, it kind of, if it hits like a certain, oh. that's oh, okay. You know, yeah. Like yeah. a little compressor. Um, sense. I'm pretty sure it's still going to be loud, y'all, but I'm going to do my best to get it right. Um, I got y'all. But yeah, um, yeah, I just, I think that they think it's going to be taken too far. They just don't trust. At least I know like the new age conservatives, the conservatives like our age is and down and younger. I feel like they feel mm-hmm. like that they just like, they just don't trust politicians now. And Anyone that can come in is better than them. How they look at it. Yeah. So it's going to okay. suck for the Republicans, at least for the oh. next four years, because they're going to have to prove to their, our, our generation that they're not just regular politicians. Like they're just their people. That's why I think you start to see now, you see all these politicians where they have these meltdowns and they, or they lose it during a session and they say the real you know what I'm saying? I think that's going to be the new wave now. This is being real and authentic and we're not politicians. We're people just like you who want what you want. You know? But they're really not. They're really not. They just want your vote so they can stay in power. Right. The, the, the Democrat way. I'll just say politician way. <laughs> Cause, cause, it's no, true no, I'm serious. It's, it's no, the same right. on both You're sides. Right. You're right. You're right. Um, the sad part is Democrats just don't get paid the way Republicans do. They make like third the money, which yeah. is it doesn't make any sense. It's like at that point, then the why are you fighting friends, bro. to keep things the way that they are when you could be fighting to make things better for the people that voted you in to make things better? No, I feel you. I feel you one thousand percent. I feel you. It's just one of those things when I guess you got to. Uh... I disagree. They disagree. You know what I'm saying? Even though we do agree. No, no, we do agree. Yeah, we do agree. We just have a. I hate that expression. <laughs> well, I don't because I was wrong with that. I feel like that's what we should do. For 2021. I think for 2021, what we should do is, is like, because I think 2020 is perfect. It was perfect, like how that year worked out. Because 2020 vision, we saw a lot of shit. I think our eyes got opened up to a lot of shit. And I think what 2021 should be is us getting a better vision, like. Look, seeing life for what it is. Like, yeah, we can agree to disagree. We're not all going to agree. Twenty twenty is better than twenty twenty one, right? Twenty twenty is perfect. It's not perfect. When you're talking about vision, it's perfect. But twenty 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 one is better. I'm fucking I'm number fucking wise, around, man. I'm fucking around. number wise. You know I can't talk. Nah, huh? are you fucking stuttering? I got a list. Uh, so speaking of twenty twenty one, as we're currently recording this on the fourth of January. There's no 
new music out as of the new year that we that I care about. Mm. That I care about. So um, you don't listen to the wrap up? I did. I, of course, I listen. I to look for. I look. I look forward to that show. Okay, I look forward yeah. to that show every year. I was mad I missed it. I missed it by like two days. I, I gotta listen to it again to catch everything. I listened to it yesterday for the first time. I forgot all about. It. I said, "Oh damn, I forgot Uncle Murder does it." Cause I, I started. I used to listen to uh, the other one, and I feel bad because he'd been doing it for so long. The other rapper to do it, um, the rapper before Uncle Murder, they was dissing each other like a couple years, few years back. Damn, I'm gonna look him up and then. Or oh, somebody's gonna put that in there like this. This name, bitch. Um, but yeah, him. He's from Virginia, <laughs> but he's dope. But uh, light skin dude. But yeah, I heard it. I thought. Um, do you want to talk about? I guess the news behind it. Uncle Murders. This is gonna be his last one, last wrap up ever. Really? Yeah, that's what he said. He said. I doubt that. He's, I doubt. That. I doubt. I doubt too. I doubt too. He he might not do it. He might not do it this year. He might skip it and then let, let the fans keep grumbling for it, and he'll do twenty twenty two. No, I feel like it, it's one of those maybe going into twenty twenty one because he is, I guess, so high in the G unit hierarchy, whatever. Like he's close to being someone that makes a lot of money doing whatever he does behind the scene. Mm-hmm. He probably has some deals going on to where he's not going to be able to put energy into music probably so he just foresees like all right well i'm doing this for like the next five months i'm doing this for three months i'm gonna be out of this the country i ain't gonna have time to be trying to write this because i know that shit takes a minute no i think all that stuff together no one thousand percent i think this year when they do open things back up um i anticipate a lot of like not trying to sound like evil business owner no, I, f- I just pay a lot of money start circulate like, I feel like people overspend yeah, yeah, it for yeah. stuff because they missed it being stuck in a house for 8 months so I feel like they're gonna overcompensate and overspend which means if not that I feel like all these businesses and bars and events and festivals they're gonna create that urge for them to you know, saying they're gonna have, they're gonna all oh, got everybody got everybody before we got Kanye, we got this. Not even with music. What we can do with music since we ain't talk about music, but um, yeah, just rain music. But you know, they gonna want to be like, oh, this artist performing here is part of these clubs, and now they can be like, all right, strip clubs now. They can be like, cool, like now you can start doing appearances and stuff. Bruh. And they're gonna pay to have these people. They are gonna pay fucking arms and legs for these people and the artists to come perform and show up and do these hostings and shit because it's been so long and they want to they want to be the ones to be like alright let's strike it while it's hot let's get to it early so at least for like yeah. the beginning until they until they realize like alright we're probably paying a little bit too much so let's drop the price or if the crowds don't really come out like I it like is the early days of rap yeah. so <laughs> we'll see I anticipate it being I anticipate it being a lot a, fucking a lot of three million dollar video <laughs> I think it's gonna be a lot of money this year in hip hop for sure I could see that. I could definitely see that. Especially if they open things back up. If they sh- if they shut it down well, for like two weeks, then we'll be good. Yeah, I know after that two weeks it's gonna be like a fucking big ass world house party. <laughs> like for real. I'm about to say I think it would be that way if and I know we're getting off the politics part, but like because of like you said who we have in office, if they can really the progressives can speak in his ear, mm-hmm. actually getting something between 1200 to 2000 a month or something like that for everybody yeah. and then that's going to start flooding the market i could see that happening because like you see my back like yeah you see what's behind me i ain't mm-hmm. bought a, i ain't bought tens since early spring and it ain't because i had a bread and just like well, i ain't going on but i but feel you like know what? i think i agree i think i think there's some yellow tape shit too Yellow tape shit. When I say yellow tape shit, it's like it's like some conspiracy theory, whatever. Just that's pretty much oh. what it is. I don't want like people like to shun, look down, talk down on conspiracy theories because there are some wild takes out there. But we're not all the same. We're not we're not a vanilla. All right. So anyway, I'm thinking that because more than likely, because the runoff election for this Georgia Senate is tomorrow, right? 
I think that the two. Did you vote? No. I'm going tomorrow. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. So, I think that I was supposed to be working at the poll. If I knew, if I was actually going to work, I would already. Oh, did yeah, it. you did say that. Mm-hmm. If I was going to work the poll tomorrow, bad, then I would have already went ahead and did it. But since I'm not, I'm just going to go walk in and just vote and leave. But, so. I think that when Joe Biden come in there, because he's gonna probably gonna talk to, because the Democrats want to give us two thousand dollars, right? They want to give it once a month. No. No. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi, they were the first one. Her and Schumacher was the first one to introduce. Donald Trump said only it wasn't, and this is I could uh, I want to I don't think it's New York Times. It was something else, but another newspaper company was on. They said it. Nancy Pelosi and Shoemaker and like a couple other ones from the house came up with the $2,000 first. Then it got shut down. That's how the 1200 came about. But it wasn't going to be multiple a month. That was the only thing they can get was like once a month, whatever. Trump all of a sudden said, hey, we need another one and we need $2,000. That's it. It was only one payment. Recent. Right. Recent. Right. That's where the whole thing came from. But they do like, and like I said, she just got and I don't like to say I hate about the politics. She just got voted the uh the house leader yesterday. Yeah. So now and then the Dem- I think Democrats are gonna take over the Senate. So it's gonna be all blue except for the Supreme Court, right? So uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna come off like a maggot, so but I don't think that's good. But it is what it is. Um Oh, as good as all blue. Yeah, I, I don't think it should be like or a, just yeah, because uh, you got the president and then you got it, it, con- you got, it does, you got the it does hurt it does hurt it does hurt like like you have to have a, a balance somewhere mm-hmm. and yeah typically when it's all blue it kind of only because I look how I look how he did the whole ice cube thing right it was like wait till the election so like now we did all this work right but they can t- literally be like all right okay now we're just gonna do what we want. We'll get to y'all later. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's a that's a light podcast. Yeah, it's just so. Yeah, historically speaking, whenever something is all blue in this country, things typically kind of slow down. And I I will have to look it up again. I know we was mm-hmm. kind of going into this, but it, it's just one of those things where, for whatever reason. We can't get the things that we've been ratting and raving about that we need to make the country better when we're in control. Mm-hmm. But then we can fight and scratch to get half of it when we're barely in control. Right. But I, and I, yeah, I have to look it up again. But this is going to be interesting. This these next four years is going to be interesting. So yeah, it it, it we'll see what he do. Like I said, I can, I'll let him. Hopefully. Hopefully, he is something. Hopefully. Um, Excuse me. Okay, this is kind of music related and kind of what we're talking about. Okay. Have you done any or read up on um, Killer Mike's bank thing? Of course. I've been. Okay, so what do you know about it? Because I, I, like, I don't. Okay, so I was, I was just looking at yeah. it and I was like, all right, well, I've been investing through Cash App all last year, doing a good experiment. Mm-hmm. I just looked at how much I invested last year my percentage and I was like alright I think I'm at like 4% profit and I was at like 15 at one point and a little bit higher but thanks right. to Trump that shit dropped but anyways um, so I was just looking at Weevil and I was like alright I'm about to start investing through Weevil because they give you um, anywhere from I think 50 to $1600 worth of free stocks and then if you get people to sign up they give you even more free stocks if they get you know so it's yeah. kind of like you know almost like a pyramid thing or whatever yeah but then i was like damn you know i want to do banking with the black bank and i know it was a black bank back in detroit but it was something about them that i researched a little while back that i didn't like i didn't like mm. but then when i seen killer mike i was like all right bet because i know he's all about um pushing the black culture forward yeah and bringing us back to like black wall street right right so it's like that makes sense. That makes sense. But I just haven't I haven't looked into it. I haven't done any research into it. Um, it's called Greenwood. Uh you go on the website, you just Google Greenwood Bank and you go pretty much it's like um 
I equate it to if you ever had the Robinhood app when they first announced that they was gonna have you can bid mm -hmm. for Bitcoin and you go on a waiting list. So it's like that now. You go in there and you go on a waiting list for them to email you to let you know that you can open up an account. So um, what you're talking about is actually actively investing into it. How to do that? You might it might be some at the bottom of the page where you can look into it. I don't know about that. I just want to open up an account with them. So. But it's him okay. and two. Well, no, guys. I, I'm looking at like a credit line because I want my I want my credit to like skyrocket this year. Right. Like I just checked. I just got a a fucking email today, and my shit went up another thirty eight points. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. what I'm doing. Um, you wanna know what I'm doing? You know what, what I'm investing <laughs> in right now? You know what I'm investing in right now? Absolutely not. A, and you wanna know the reason why I'm doing that? It's because for the past yeah, we talked about that. nine months. I want to be debt free. So I've been trying to, I've been paying off debts for the past nine months, right? Not to mention, I started up uh, two organizations. So, nah, yeah, two companies. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You don't have that excess cash. Yeah, so I'm already starting at the hole already, at least for five years in one. And this one, this new one, I'm looking at three. I'm just being realistic as far as like being in the red. Um, before I even think about being the black and breaking even, right? But so, but the one thing I noticed is like, if my credit is better, then I can apply for a credit card with a higher balance and in turn use that yep. to help support my business. Um, I know you can have the whole line where your business is its own credit line and stuff like that. Um, what y'all get mixed up about that is, is um, as far as like, at LLC, that limited liability is for like you say you won't get sued by somebody. I got one. Um, what they yeah. what you mean by saying this whole like you can build his own credit line is as far as tax wise, which means the money that you make is the money that you make. The money that your company makes is the money that your company makes. So don't don't get that all screwed up because you'll go get fucking audited by the IRS and go to jail. So <laughs> that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Chill out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know everything about it. I just know yeah, what they, I've done, and I ain't do none of that. Who they just get the IRS, the uh, or maybe in the FBI and the IRS? They just got um, I think it was somebody from Pretty Ricky. Cause like oh, he yeah, got yeah, like a yeah, bunch yeah. of money. The PPP was, it, was that him? The PPP, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just like somebody was like, you know, well, how come you haven't? Cause I don't work. So it was like, well, I don't have a, a nine to five job. So it was like, how come you haven't filed for unemployment? I just, I don't, I don't feel right about that one. <laughs> but for me personally, I just don't feel right about I it. I can't even do it, bro. I the last time I had a job before I quit Domino's, I thought I worked there for two weeks, for three weeks. Before that was 2018, bro. Like for real. Like I'm currently unemployed. So. I think since I've been out, I've worked for, if you add up all the time, the days, I've probably worked for a month out of the whole, maybe three years in August that I've been out there. <laughs> like, for real. Oh, wow. A whole month. Yeah, which is great. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I, I feel like I'm blessed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I want to use that Freedom. time. Yeah. it's I want to use that time to build up what I was going to do because I knew that I wasn't going to get live a comfortable life out, you know, a month out of the gate. I know it's gonna take some time, but now it's getting to that point where yep. it's the crunch time, and you know that's why I'm kind of like nervous. So I'm trying. I'm, kinda, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen because it's gonna be a year. Yeah, let's go. I'm gonna push for it. I'm gonna push for it. You, I'm gonna push for it. You've been sowing the water in that seed for going on three years. Yeah, bro. Non stop. Uh, I was about to say that, and you ain't never stopped. So that's 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 what it's right. that's what it's about. And truthfully, I don't think I ever would. You know what I mean? If it if uh, if everything else failed, and let's say I, I just fall flat on my face, and I did have to get like a nine to five, whatever. One, I'll probably be into my. I probably had to be fifty years old because then I'll be like, all right, let me just be a Walmart greeter or something. Cause I have to be, I have to get to the point where I'm declining physically in order for me to actually just stop actively pursuing this. Like if I'm physically able to do that, cause I feel like at 50, that's when my knee is going to start acting up. 
I ain't gonna want to move. Don't say that. So much. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying that that might be that. You know. I'm just. I listen. I embrace old age. I love. I, I'm happy. I got homeboys who ain't, yeah, who ain't thirty. You, wanna, you know what I'm yeah, saying? You want to be moving. Yeah, but you I'm saying be moving around it, at 50, 60, 70. I do. I, I would love to be like a 50, 60 year old. That's like, I'm not gonna be super bad. You, I'm, I'm done working out. I promise y'all. Like I'll tell you that. I'm, I'm cool on that. But fuck that. I, you know what I'm saying? Like if it gets to a point where it's like, all right, man, you're 50 years old, bro. What are you doing? Like I'm just gonna like I just get nine to five, be a Walmart greeter. I'm still gonna get paid for the army, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a disabled veteran, and I'm just gonna smoke weed and be a Walmart greeter. At least I tried, you know. <laughs> At least I tried. By that time, it'd be appeal. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. We definitely had that conversation. Yeah. It was like, why don't they just make weed legal for soldiers? I don't know about that one, bro. <laughs> I ain't trying to they be a ranger, well. motherfucker. They might as well. There was a cop. There was a cop that told me a couple weeks ago. He was like, "If y'all know you're a I said, "No, you guys smoke weed." And I was just like, "Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do." You know? That's why. You, that's why we're not out here terrorizing society. But yeah, so um, <laughs> which is a joke, though. It's a joke. <laughs> I ain't on it. It's a joke. It is a fucking joke. All right. So since there's no really no good music, I mean. Since there's no new music that we are aware of that came out this year, I gotta say, I no, nope, no, nope, nope. I gotta got say something. this. It's got some. I got a revelation. I got the okay. revelation, right? Go ahead. Yeah, revelation. Mm-hmm. All right. So I don't know if you ever noticed. I don't know if the the audience ever noticed, but I always have my pad and a pen. And whenever y'all are talking about somebody, I normally write it down or always ask y'all for a suggestion. Yeah. So the last time we were going outside of the arguments that we were having on my end. Um, no matter how it starts. I actually, <laughs> but I actually looked up um, somebody that I felt like I would like, but I was like, I don't know. And it was um, King Von. I listened to King Von. I downloaded his last album. Nice. That's a good album. Um, I downloaded, while listening to him, I downloaded uh, Little Dirk's last album. Okay, it's a voice. That was a mistake. That was a, that was that was a mistake. I'll really? say why in a second. Yes, please. And then um, a couple of days later, I started listening to um, oh, what the fuck's the kid's name? Uzi Uzi and Futures. Okay, okay. last joint. All right, you gotta get like, to review on you that. Know, so so I always I wanted to say this to the audience who's like, I don't want to come on here and seem like I'm shitting on the generation or anything like that. Oh, no. I, I do have a never did. a slight progressive look towards music. I do appreciate music. Um, it's just like I, like I always say, it's just some things just ain't for my ears. Right. And it doesn't make it good or bad. It's just I just can't, you know, consume that music right then and there. It's going to take a minute. Yeah, I got you. I got so, you. Um, I don't think anyone really looked at you like that, though. I really don't. I feel like that sometimes. <laughs> of course, because because they, cause they, but, cause you say but, something but, but, and it's I, like everyone's like, and that's why that's why I, what I'll do is I'll tell you like it's the thing. That's why I think you'd be great for like podcasts too. I know we keep bringing that back. I know you said no, but I think you'd be great. Is <laughs> like with, with Tony, right? So if you realize our different approach, because that episode you came on there, me and you had it started out with me. And you had a debate, and she ended up getting. She intervened in there. What were we debating? Uh, it started out about how I think I was saying how we was, I can't remember what me and you debate about the first, but we ended up agreeing about how it's like every time black people get to a certain step. Right? That's what me and it you was started agreeing and, I brought up, yeah. and then yeah, she yeah, came yeah. in, that's when she came in and was like, oh, I can't, you know, I got, I'm gonna support everybody. We, you know, we're not just, just da, 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 right? Cool. But yeah, remember, yeah, but me and you was on the same page. Yeah, when she jumped. But before that, we I can't. Before that, we was debating about something. It was something small. But you gotta think about my approach is when I say is I'd be like, all right, for what I think you'll say, my response will be as if you said it. So you be like, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Hers would be like, dang, how can I explain? It? Damn, bro, I spoke too much. But it's a different approach like to where. She thinks- she 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 already she already has an idea of how I feel about something. Yeah, 
Whereas I'm kind of like, that, that's how I'm, I'm kind of like regurgitating it to you, but give you my opinion on that regurgitation of what my interpretation of what you said. Her to yeah. like, okay, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. she's doing the same thing, but her way of going about it is like, she, you said it, this what you're saying, fuck that. Like, and then, yeah. and you don't, also, you do stand your ground, you don't back down, which I think that's another good reason. But because y'all had this different thing, because yeah, I'm a grown think, ass man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, obviously. <laughs> I'm saying like I think y'all you'll be a great mesh fit because when you say certain things I can tell you'll say them like you're firm in it but when you're hearing someone else you're curious about what they have to say about it so I think you'll say something I I don't believe in I agree to disagree it's like no I I just I don't agree with you but I understand your your stance on something I just may not agree right so and that's that's always what I want to do. I always want to know somebody else's perspective, and I feel like that makes me a better man, right? Or whatever the uh, the scenario is, it makes me a better hip hop head, or it makes me a yeah. better uh, wh- whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing about um, shit like this, like podcasts, bro. Like it's all about it's all even outside of podcasts, like barbershop talk, smoke pit talk. Like it's all just subjective shit. It's all it's all about how well you can argue your point you know what i mean that's really all it is yeah and that's what makes it so entertaining for people to listen to or watch because they'd be like oh okay whether they agree with either side or neither or both like it's just entertaining because they had those real conversations you know and that's what i like to do hopefully they get something from it hopefully they hear something new that makes them think about it differently yeah or see something from a different perspective right because people might say i might um, be i might be contrarian but I'm not. I'm really not a contrarian, y'all. I just like to. I want all sides to feel like they have a voice. That's all it is. Okay. So my revelation. Uh, who did I listen to first? I want to say I listened to somebody before it came on. It had to be like, what did we talk about first? Oh, I, oh, about? oh, oh. I tried. I tried to listen to uh, Offset again. I was like, I, I still didn't Probably make it past the same track. I was just like, fuck it. Um, yeah. So I was like, fuck it. You know what? The whole story turned. It was the morning of the storytelling thing, or the morning after. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? They keep saying King Von is a good storyteller. 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 All right. Um, I downloaded King Von. Uh, like about four o'clock in the morning. It was before my my morning run. So I downloaded and I got to about the fourth track and I was like, all right, I'm kind of feeling this. I like this. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm going to listen to him when I run. If I can listen to a whole album without skipping, it's something I know I'm going to, it's going to stay in the rotation. Right. Um, doesn't, mean, doesn't mean that it's good or bad. It's just, I know it's something that I can listen to and occasionally pay attention to and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a feel it. Yeah. Um, which is funny because like you were saying like uh Kid Cuddy was like different vibes and this, that, and the third. I can't run to Kid Cuddy. Really? But I can sit down, I can listen to it, I can play shit. I can play it in the crib, but like I can't run to it yeah, because it's not, I need it's not meant for He has yeah, some songs. But if I'm in a whip, like yeah. a small amount. You know. When it comes yeah, to running. It, yeah, that's that and that's what it was. Like I was like twenty minutes into my run and it, and it got to some track and I was like Skip. Oh, okay, all right skip fuck it let me go to my most listened to don q or fucking j cole or some shit but um but yeah inter- no i listen to uh, king bomb go ahead no go ahead you finish um so i listened to the king bond um i actually made it 38 minutes into my run and i guess the i guess this album was only like 30 something minutes because the track that was playing was like little dirk and somebody else so i was like all right um so later on that day, if not the next morning, I was sitting up and I put on King Von. And I was like, oh yeah, Little Dirt, duh. Well, let me get Little Dirt. And um, I didn't know what Little Dirt sound like. Right. Like I know what he looked like. And I know I've heard him. Because I like that Drake song, the Nike commercial. I said that for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be but right. I was like, yeah, I like that track. But I always kind of mentally zone out on Little Dirk's verse. And I didn't, I know it was Little Dirk, but I don't know it was Little Dirk. Right. And I put on his, his recent joint and I just don't like the sound of his voice. That 
that kind of high tone pitch. And then it was, and what I say it was a mistake is because it was after him losing King Von. Mm-hmm. And so it was full of heartache. And I was yep. like, I'm not, yep. I was like, I can't, I can't get into that right now. Yep. Not only is your voice, I can't consume, but like, now I feel like you're crying and whining for a really oh, good reason, but it yeah, just, yeah, it just, yeah. it just hit me. It hit yeah. me hard. It hit me hard. I get what you're it's saying. Like, it's like going to a funeral exactly what you're saying. to somebody that you don't know personally, but you just know them from the hood. And then yeah. you hear their mom, the grandmother in the front row, like that heartache, scream, cry. And it's just like, you can't take it. So I was like, I can't listen to him right now. I can, I can work my way into hearing his voice. Or whatever, but I was just like, I can't listen to a little jerk right. right. And then I put on um the uh little Uzi and Future, and it had a good vibe. I actually was liking the vibe. I was like, all right, so I got me got me into like a, a wanted to write type vibe or whatever. And I think I made it to the six six uh track maybe. And fucking Uzi. I don't know too much about Uzi, but I don't believe he's from the streets. Is he a street dude? Uh, I wouldn't know. I'm not from Philly. Uh, they call him the Sassy Savage. So. All right. The what? The Sassy Savage. <laughs> All right. Um. So, yeah. he. I think the bar or the track started off with uh, something with a K. I'll pop you like a willy. And I was like, okay, I didn't just hear that. And then, you know, I let the track play and then it, it was it was a hook. Mm-hmm. And he said it again. And I'm like, I know they, they into popping willies in Philly or whatever, but right. Little Uzi is not popping no fucking AK at nobody. Why are you t- and and, I, and then I went into the whole Drake kind of rant in my head and I was like, nope, cut it off. I listen to that shit in the car when I go on the road or something like that. Let me just play while I'm thinking about some other shit. Mm-hmm. So I can vibe to it, but like I know it's not gonna be something that is I'm gonna be like, did you hear what he said? Like, like I'm looking for bars or lyrics. Yeah. So I just gotta work on that one. You know what I'm saying? Now that, that was like my apology to anybody I offended with anything I've ever said about the genera- this generation of hip hop. I've said no, a whole no. bunch of I've because, said a whole because, bunch of shit. When, probably when, like way more shit than you said on here. It's just that the fact is like <laughs> I don't give a fuck, bro. It's just my opinion. It's, it's just opinions, bro. It's just talk. It's all subjective. It's no, it's no like, like book of hip hop where it's like these are the like guidelines for everything and like you know what I'm saying. Like, you should <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, fuck off. I like these conversations because you get a chance for people to. It's like it's kind of like an experiment, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I was into psychology. Like I like seeing other people and hearing other people's responses to certain subjects and especially with music because i'm a music lover i love music and when i talk about music I, to me music is like a beautiful woman you know what i'm saying it's like it's like my wife she's beautiful you know what i'm saying it's like to, i'm married to her she's everything so i can no matter if the song is good like i'm not gonna hear a trash song and be like yeah this is the greatest thing ever no but a lot of times if I hear a song that not everybody not necessarily popular and I fuck with it, it's because the musicality of it. It could be like I'm very big on lyrics. I'm very big on production. I'm very big on story behind the songs. The story of the song. Um what are they trying to say? You know what I'm saying? Like every artist is different because one, you how it should be, because nobody wants to hear the same artists all the damn time. And two, what makes them right. great is that it's like wrestling they all have their own character but that character is how they envision that persona of that artist right jay-z always wanted to be I'm, i want to be the best and i want to be the most smartest dude in the room most marketable dude in hip-hop i want to be that guy i want to be able to people to question whether big ear pockets the greatest that's what i want to be now this is like i'm just a kid from queensbridge who's found his way of becoming a man I'm just trying to you know what I'm saying I'm just trying to embrace and trying to embrace our culture and big up our culture whatever like a KRS one you know what I'm saying who's like a warrior like he looks at hip hop like as if you know it's a it's like a like he's a soldier 
guarding it and like hip hop is like this village and he's like the warrior they're going to protect it. that's like hey, Harris wanted to meet you know like Rakim I think okay, he, yeah. he has like a divine complex to him like he raps his too it's kind of like his raps are parables you know what I'm saying like he wants to be known as one of the gods of hip hop Wu-Tang is one to known as gods of hip hop like they, they have these characters so even when the R&B and all that stuff if I say The weekend is the his After Hours was the best album 2020 because from everything from the production to the lyrics to certain songs like I was telling you about um, Blind the Lights that the actual music is the actual hook not the words and people thought I was wrong I don't hope y'all would have go look that up but that's the actual truth wait say that again so on Blind the Lights by the weekend the part's like dun, 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 dun. that's the actual hook of the song not what he's saying Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Y'all said the same. Remember, I told y'all this about three episodes ago. No, I, I kind of remember it, but now I'm. As soon as you did the horns, I was like, I can picture the track now. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, but stuff like that. That's just off the lead single. Like, there's so much more stuff that's in that album that it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. It's nuts. <clears throat> so if you haven't heard. The after hours by the weekend, which I'm pretty sure you have. Um, but if you haven't, check it out. I'll probably, I'll probably, yeah. But yeah, like when I say I listen to musicality um, or song, like I'll listen to, I'll get like super high, and like when I'm driving, I'll like play Harry Styles. You know who Harry Styles is? That name sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, he's but white. I'm probably getting mixed up with people. He used to be in his boy band called One Direction. I think he's like British or something. He's a singer. Anyway, is he still making music? Yeah, bro. Harry Styles, bro. He's oh. like a, he's like a thing. So, like, like he for real. He's he came from a boy band that was called One Direction, and it was like him. And I Zane. remember. I remember the. Yeah, he, yeah. He was part of. Them. I mean, I remember One Direction. Yeah, he was part of them. I guess he's still, but he's doing like a solo thing now. But he dropped his uh, solo album, and okay. he got a song called "Meet Me in the Hallway." But it it sounds like an old hippie like mushroom trip. Like the sound of the vibe of it, so I like I'll play that okay. when I'm in my, like high as fuck in the car because it's just the from the guitar, you know. It's just the it's so you can you can get that vibe. Yeah, it's that vibe. So that so when I, when I say Young yeah. Thug is a goat, I'm not saying it because he's the best MC lyrical member. Like no, I'm just I'm saying that because the shit he does with songs and he knows that he's aware of that. And once he figured out what it exactly he was doing. He found his rap voice, which I think that's what a lot of rappers struggle with because it's a lot of rappers, but not a lot of rappers know their voice. The ones that do are the ones who actually make it. Dude, um, this has been going through my head like the last probably month, if not more, but definitely recently. Like I was I was one of those people that hated auto tunes when it was uh like after T Pain and everybody was you and it was like Again, you know, you got to get your ears used to because now pretty much everybody use it or some mm-hmm. type of, some type of, uh, what's the word? Since synergy, not since it, oh, they the, do something to their voice to make it sound. Oh, the synthesizer, yeah, <clears throat> synthesizer, yeah, they yeah. do that, and mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, okay, so I know that there's a difference between the two, but you know, it kind of sounds the same. They put the auto tune. So, like, I'm, I'm hating. Yeah. Right, so I'm hating that you know because you know i do the motion graphics artwork or whatever and um i'm not real big in the stripper rappers probably just because for, for me it's just like i feel like you're They're talking about whores. me make his pockets hurt yeah whores no i have a problem with you being a whore you know get your money ma but it's just like you if you're trying to play me and take you know tap my pockets and i feel some type of way i enjoy that shit um, i enjoy that shit i like it <clears throat> To a degree, to a degree. Like if if I'm in a club or something like that, cool. But like, just me out and about. Like I'm not throwing. I like Meg, but I'm not listening to Meg. Yeah, I, like I, I like her as an artist. Yeah, but it's just like I can't sit up here and just like it ain't even about if she's talking about you know sucking a dude off or whatever, whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah, that does fuck with you if it's if those lyrics are in your head. But it's just one of those deals. It's like I just feel like you just your lyric ain't for me. But I want right. you to do you. You know what I'm saying? I'll download and stream your shit when it's sleep. 
to give me more streams is that if I need to do that. But, you know what's um, crazy though? About I know we just keep branching all different conversations, but I kind of I think academics brought this up. He was on Twitch streaming and he brought this up. He was saying, and I think this is true. Like Nikki is probably the last of the actual female MC that you know who could actually like rap with the fellas. But not only that, what you were saying, what you were saying, the reason why I, I wait, 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 go back, go back. You cut out, you cut out, go back. My Nikki is the last. Nikki, no, I can hear you now. Oh. It just went out. It went off a little bit. Major point. She's the last female yeah, MC yeah. to it that can actually rap with the niggas, like that male MCs. Like she's one of those ones who can hold her own. Like if you throw her on, if you throw on, let's say you get a DJ premiere beat, and you like, I want all the hardest spitters on there, and then Nikki's like, let me get on that. Her voice, her voice, her verse is gonna be formidable. I'm not saying it might not be the best on there. But she's gonna hold her own. Yeah, I know. And that, that's not that's not many. I know, I know. That's not many that could do that. Way, way no cut. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, there is a handful of female rappers that can. The I'm talking about since her, not, she's not. she's the last of that, right? But the, that's not the no. reason. That's not the reason why I brought her up. The reason why I brought her up is because oh, Nikki okay. was the first, second. Lil Kim was the first. But the actual female MC or like their songs, not the raunchy ones, but it's like there are certain songs they had where I can listen to like on my own, like if I'm just chilling or whatever, like it's just a vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that. Because yeah. you, you threw on that that joint with uh my beat. Beat. I was just mm-hmm. like, that's that's cheap. That, that's cheating. That's but not, yeah, that is I'm a definitely a classic. I re- I gotta hear the remix. I don't anything. wanna hear the original. I wanna hear the remix. All yeah. respect for to my beat. But you know, I gotta hit a remix with, with Little Kim on it. Yeah, she killed it. But um, no, she but, but the point I was the, the point that I was getting uh getting to was there's a I ain't gonna say her name if she sees this or not. Mm-hmm. But there's a female stripper here that raps, and like I'm doing the same thing for her for you, right? But I hate her fucking music. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to support her because I know she she believes in what she's doing, right? Um, she has the look. She right. just ain't got the sound. And it's just like, at what point do you? At what point do you do you fire your production manager or your your producer, somebody that can make it sound like you're not using auto tune, right? Like we know you're using it. That's great, bro. This is this is and this I, is. And I and and I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Oh, no, I'm, not, I'm not like, gonna go like, down that route. It, but it sounds, it sounds like that's your voice. If you were in the bathroom or if you were in the hallway and you got that same type of feel, and it's like, right. oh, okay, bet. So right. I, I feel like you can sing, or I feel like you can spit bars a cappella or some shit like that. Right? No, you can't, cause that shit is horrible. You know what I tell? I tell. And I'm probably gonna hit her up tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think one one. You should be honest with her because. If you really want what's best for her, you want her to make that next step and to find her rapper voice, whatever. Sure, if you want to be successful, you should be honest sure. and be like, hey, <clears throat> just because you're a fan, you don't know the technical dance and all that stuff. But just so you're coming from an honest space, you have no interest in there outside of you just do work for her. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I you, you give it you giving me the perfect advice, but but no, I, I get what you're saying. She, but I, I think at the yeah, end of the day, it's um. Cause I had I had uh I have four artists right now that I manage and that's four different personalities. That's four different visions of where they see themselves twelve months from now, even two days a week from now, let alone um ten years from now. They have their own idea of how how they how they're gonna be a superstar and how to get there and what that superstar is, like their brand. And the great thing about dudes like me and women like me who do what I do is like you just they give you the template you just gotta mold them into find that right like I was saying like we were talking about earlier but to that finding that rapper voice not literally well yeah you do but in yeah. some literal sense because some of them don't have a voice they sound trying to sound like someone else but when I say rapper voice I mean like to the point where it's like you find out who you are who you are as that character right because <clears throat> whether you're a hood rapper or a rapper 
uh, let's say a backpack rapper or whatever, nine times out of 10, you're writing about your past or your some experience, whatever. You're not actively doing that. So you're not really doing that. You're creating a character. You're telling a narrative. Oh, I was going to bring that up. So yeah, I'll definitely gonna bring if her thing is, I'm a stripper, hustler, whatever like that. If it's the content, then you can say, hey, go more in depth into it. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, it's it's one thing to be like, hey, your music sucks. Can you just try to be better? You know what I'm saying? But then if you come, instead of coming, so, like we have a complaint, I always say, I always tell my soldiers all the time. When you have an issue, when you before you come up to me, have some type of solution. Have a solution. That yeah, way, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because it won't be a waste of conversation. And that's not, that's not, it's not even an army thing. It's just a life thing in general. Like, if you, yeah. if you, as you progress in life, you're gonna, you're gonna, you have someone, you gotta know what to do. Like, like, they ain't gonna have the answers. And they're not mind readers, also. And on top of that, the artists are very, women sick. are. <laughs> they like to think they are. They like to think they are. <laughs> and on top of that, you gotta think about the fact that artists are very sensitive because they're being they're putting themselves mm-hmm. in a vulnerable state they're putting themselves out there they're expressing themselves so for you to tell them something's not good that's going to true artists that's are. right that's what they're going to the ones that's in it for the money they don't give a fuck right the ones that they don't really give a fuck that's what I'm saying like so the fact that she the fact that she's not going to listen to you that tells you that she's passionate about it so what is it that's all about the escalate. what is it about it it's just the, the fact that she used the auto tune whatever because a lot of times you artists uh, I'm gonna put this out there as a tip y'all should think about when y'all going to make these songs think about performing them on stage and I'm not just saying like oh just make stadium music all the time no, what I'm saying is that if you know you can't sing don't try to sing and hit notes that you can't sing because yeah you can get all the tune and it'll sound good but when you get out there, there's not gonna be places that's gonna have a space for a sound engineer to go backstage to turn on the auto tune and your mic whenever you sing or whatever. Like, you know, not everybody's gonna have the same microphone as Travis Scott. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you do, that's gonna cost thousands of dollars, and you already can cost your label that much money. And it's just now you now you're coming to expense. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're supposed to be a profit. Right, right, right. So you want to be marketable. You want to be a profit. To I'm talking about as far as whatever your goal is, whether it's independent or major. You want to be marketable. You want to be a profit. So to accommodate that self, if you can't take vocal lessons to you can at least attempt to try to stay within your range, then I suggest you don't try to do something that you know damn well. If there was no auto tune and you on stage that you can't hit them notes because you people will tell you the truth. <clears throat> And that's what you just got. I was got. about to say when she sings, she sounds good, but no. Nah. You just gotta tell her. I was about to say that she sounds better her. when she sings, but like, like I mean, I will. Like, like I said, I'll, I'll probably hit her up tonight for some shit. But it's just one of those deals. It's just she got a lot of people in her cool. head. She's down there with you, as a matter of fact. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's down there. Yeah, she's down there in Atlanta right now, and it's just one of those deals. It's just like people bigging her up. So um, all I can do is. Like I, I did something, I sent her something two months ago and it, it just went left. And I was just like, mom, I'm giving you free shit. Like I'm not asking for nothing. Like literally, like like I said, she's a stripper. And when I met her in the strip club, her homegirl was like, yo, we should all go, you know? And I'm like, no, like, I don't, I'm straight. I don't want to fuck with her like that. Mm. Gorgeous girl, but it's like, Nah, like I, I ain't feeling like that. So when I do give her that advice, or when I'm offering free support, the way she comes back is as if I'm just trying to get a nut, and I'm just like, I could have did that shit back in fucking April, back when you was offering. So I'm just like, so that's that's what I'm saying. Is like she won't listen yeah. because I, she has a lot of people in her head. So there lies like, the big deep, rap, dark criminal like, link. There it goes right there. <clears throat> so it's deep in the rap. It's deep in the rap, right? And like it is, that's understandable because, like I said, artists are sensitive. And that doesn't mean that y'all are soft. I'm just saying. I don't, no, I, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think it is. I think she's in it for the bread. I think she's just in it for money. If she can do something else to get more money, she's gonna do that. Right. I feel like she's. I feel like she's she's only doing it right now because she's getting some streams she's getting some looks or whatever uh-huh. but if somebody come at her with like a modeling deal she gonna take that 
Like, I don't feel like doing music is her passion. So why are you working for her? If she's doing it for the money. <clears throat> or you just... I honestly... I work I, with anybody. I did believe in her. But now, but like I said, like two months ago, I just kind of straight away from her. The only reason why I know she's doing things now is because I fuck with her girl. Right. That's the only reason why, like, I know she's in where she is doing a photo shoot or celebrating whatever and just like oh okay that's what's up okay cool yeah, that's dope. That's dope. um yo where can i find your music you know what i'm saying i'll download your shit i'll stream it i'll play it i'll support you it's just like it was really be a little bit better <laughs> yeah so maybe hopefully you know what I'm saying you get big enough to where somebody gets you in the studio and they're like yo we need to change this shit up you know what i'm saying you get like a, a up and coming fucking dr dre or some shit and you turn into the female, but yeah, that's whatever. That's what it kind of goes back to the sensitivity thing, um, to be honest, because they're very fragile. They're sensitive about this shit, like Kendrick said on that Tech Nine song, um, "Fragile," which is a dope song. Y'all should check that out. Um, <clears throat> but it's very true, and especially here, I notice that a lot. Like, like artists would big each other up, like they all, you know, they all want the, that one thing. They want to change their family lives they want to be famous they want their music to be heard you know, which i mean i guess you could say is those are different things but ultimately it's all about the look for them because they feel like if i get the look and i become the one to do the most and do all this whichever one gives me the look that's what i'm gonna go to first you know it doesn't mean it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean they might not love it they probably don't they probably just like it a lot but if like I said, ASAP Rocky, he's into fashion and stuff now. I'm pretty sure if he if he was aware of this fashion sense or whatever, when he was around the same time he started rapping, if he was trying to do both, and if the fashion thing would have took off first, he probably would have did that. He probably wouldn't have been rapping. Doesn't necessarily he don't mean doesn't yeah. mean he doesn't love it. It's just the fact that like like Rihanna right now, she's doing the fancy shit now. Doesn't mean she don't love music. It's just that sometimes you just stray away. That's just like the opposite end of people now who are not as rich. And they're trying to get on, but you got to think about they're struggling. So they're like, well, whatever gives me the money, whatever gives me the attention, which leads to this money, I'm going to do. <clears throat> which that's why I was saying, like, if you want, depend, that's why I was asking you, like, well, why are you still working with her? You know, because do you want to be the guy to be like, you know what? I want to work with people who's actually doing it, who are into it. Or are you just like, you know what? Business is business. <clears throat> Not on a moral standpoint, nah, bro, because you know it me, was but. What are you saying, Juno? It, it, it's kind of 50-50 on that one. Because I feel like no matter how bad you are, I I understand how hard it is to get up on that stage. I know how hard it is to get in front of a mic. Right. So just for the simple fact that you're doing it, I'm going to support you because I know how much that support helps. I've been on stage and forgot my my uh, my poetry. That shit Word. sucks. Word. <laughs> But to sit up there and have the entire crowd say, no, 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 start over, start over. No, start, stop the clock, start it over. Because, you know, you only get three minutes in the competition. Right. They literally was like, no, stop the clock, start that shit over because we want to hear what he got to say. And I had to start over, fucked up, start over, fucked up. And then I just did something completely different. But it was just a simple fact that the crowd was like supporting me in, in my journey. And it was just like, thank you. Like, because if, they would have been like, boo, get off the stage. I probably wouldn't be doing the shit that I'm doing now. Yeah. Maybe. Nah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. I do it for free. I get it. I get it. <laughs> like, I mean, you, you see that. Like, I do yeah. shit for free just because if you go on my Instagram page, you'll see, like, I just do shit do. for people for free because I, I support what they're doing. Regardless if it's rap, R&B, singing. Actually, I just did some shit for... Um, a masseuse up in New Hampshire, I think. Mm -hmm. She's somewhere in the Northeast. And I just cool. did some shit for her. She just did a photo shoot and I took all her stills and I made them shits into some, some motion graphic. And she was like, oh my God, I love this. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, because like, I believe in what you're doing. Like you're just not one dimensional. Like you you really are passionate about doing what you're doing. Yeah. Even if it is just doing massage, like you're passionate about it. And that's so good if you're for passionate you. about the music. That's good for you too, bro. Or if you're just pushing it to do it. No. No, that's good for you too. I was just about to say, um, it's good for oh. you because one, <clears throat> you're actively working on your craft into a new area, your field that you of interest that you want to get into. 
And two, that's building yeah, a that's net- be fine. It's building a network because you're doing it for free yeah. and then they double back and then you're like, hey, I know I did for free. I believe what you're doing. So I can give you this, I can give you this discount, you know. But here's my normal rate. But because yeah. I believe what you're doing here, boom, you know. Networking is important. That's coming. Man. Two more weeks. Network is coming. Um, you just gotta network, man. Whatever I was saying. But I had that thought. Ooh, how much time we got? Uh, it's only an hour and a half, so I didn't know how much revelations you. So had. how do you? Well, no. So, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. This was a revelation. So the morning I was listening, I want to say it was King Von. Excuse me. I feel like I was listening to somebody else, but I think it was him. Matter of fact, yeah, it was. Um, because I didn't listen to his album the first the first morning. Right. I just went to went to title and then I hit play and I think that's like all of his popular joints and it just go down in succession or whatever and I think I got to the third one and I cut it off because it was that hood energy like it put me in a mind space of I get it yeah 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 Yeah. so it was just like like I know I can't I can't listen to music like that when I'm trying to do something else um, like I was saying on the last the last pod, I was just like, if I'm in my feelings and I want to write some some shit for for a woman or something, I'm not gonna throw on King Von. Right, right, I'm not right, gonna throw right. on <clears throat> right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna throw on like Drake or fucking Weekend or you know what I'm saying something like that, something a little bit softer to kind of get my mind frame in that in that uh, space. So um, I just had that thought that morning. I was just like. I'm looking at what I know about him and I was just like it it felt like he was far removed from the streets or far enough away removed from the streets for what happened to him not to have happened like I feel like he was successful enough he had enough money to where if he wanted strippers around him because I think he, he was at a strip club or was he just at a nightclub it was like a club yeah it was a club either or I felt like he was at a point where you can have that club life wherever you are like you can bring it to you and you will be surrounded by people that you know or at least you would be secure because you'll have security keeping that element away from you and it was just like I don't I don't, I don't want to get it I do want to go deep into it, but I don't want to dig too deep into the streets. But it's just one of those deals. It's just like, I remember back in the day when 50 came out and 50 was that street dude. 50 was the one that got shot. Mm-hmm. Was it nine times or whatever? Yep. Nine times. Yep. Biggest, yeah, that was the biggest thing ever in hip hop. You know, he survived. And um, I think he got to like his third album or maybe a second after doing the G unit or whatever, whatever. And it was like, All right. Why are you still rapping about the streets? Why are you still rapping about gangster shit when we know you got millions? So it's like, at what point do I think it's twofold? At what point should rappers stop rapping about where they come from in that aspect? And will the will their listeners accept them being actual or not actual? Changing their content to be more artistic. Right. Um, <clears throat> because 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 I because I only believe like that violence perpetuates itself. It's, it stays in the music, and the music moves us. Like I dress the way I dress because of hip hop. I talk the way I talk because of hip hop. Even though I know I speak a little proper or whatever. <laughs> Fuck y'all for making fun of me. We we had that conversation last time. Hey, yo, I got a lot of pops on the head. I got I had concussions before I had concussions. <laughs> um. But it's like everything that we do is because of the music that we listen to. So, yeah, I was raised on jazz and like traditional R&B. And then I switched over into rap. And now today's R&B. 
and yeah, like, yeah, okay, I came from a certain environment, but I know the dudes that was in that environment listen to the same music. You do what you do to make it, but I feel like the music just brings you back and it just, it, it's like you have to break out of that cycle. Like, I know I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be alive today if I was in Detroit. That's, that's guaranteed. Right. Like, if I didn't join the army, I joined the army at 29. And at 29, um, with no names, I got offered to make money doing something. And I literally thought about it. And I was like, yeah, I can do this. I can make good money. I can provide for my girl that I want to marry. We ever have a kid. I see how my man's living. And he's already talking about me moving up to where he at. Hey. But I wouldn't have made it to 32. And when I went home last year, I found out he had got murdered. And that was my job was to keep him alive. So it's just one of those, at what point do we stop rapping about the violence? So we stop losing these, these young kings or young princes, soon to be kings. Like Nip, that hurt. Right. I wasn't a Bond, uh, King Bond fan, but it's like King Bond and Pop Smoke, most recent two fucked me up because I was like I, I could see myself being a big fan of this new generation of rap and, and now mm-hmm. it was like I don't even want to I don't want to continue to download stream and listen to this music and give them more looks give them more money just for them to get closer to their graves right. you know what I'm saying so it's like yeah. so at what point do you stop and I'm, we're going to talk about this off offline because it's something a little bit more personal but it's just like when do you get tired about rapping about losing your boy? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, so you yeah. rapping about losing your boy last week and we about to go retaliate on whatever. Yeah. And these motherfuckers are listening to you. All right. So I, and I, got, a good, you, I got a good story. I understand what you're Can I give you a good from. story? I just think you're you going for like six minutes, bro. So I just, got, I just gonna give you my, my bad. Go ahead, go ahead, go it's gonna be quick. Right. I'm just gonna give my little soliloquy on what you said because that was a lot. Because uh, I don't know if you was asking me or that was like a rhetorical question in there. Uh, but so, no, yeah. I was, I wasn't because I, I just want to hear your opinion. Uh, I, I don't, I don't agree with most of that. Um, only because I feel like I'm a firm believer that. We are a product of our, product of our environment, not music. I knew you was about to say that. And because that because I mean that means that we shouldn't watch like gangster movies because they're like you you look at like people who there are some rappers who build their rap voice after a movie character or an album is kind of catered or their lifestyles. But you know what I'm saying? So there are movies that influence people to join gangs. So should we just stop, just show nothing but like upstanding citizen movies where, you know what I'm saying? When nothing goes on. Like if we stop showing um, serial killer movies, there'll be no more serial, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we're a product of our environment that's the music, that's one. So in saying that, to answer your first question, I don't think they should stop because we've seen situations where rappers switched up where they tried to show growth. Cause like I said, every rapper is different. Every artist is different. I see. Every artist is different. So, but they're human beings also. So they're naturally going to grow. But they're human beings that are listening to your music. These are your consumers for your product. And if they only consume, if they only like a certain flavor, you can't fault them for liking that flavor. If you come out, like, it's, for instance, like you're, I look at like you're providing, it's like a fast food service. You come out, they love you because you make the best burgers. But then you're like, you know what? I want to make hot dogs now. So you say, oh, maybe I want to, I want to use auto tune whatever. So that's hot dogs. They be like, bro, hot dogs are cool, but you fuck with your hamburgers. You know what I'm saying? Now you can't. Who you gonna? Who's wrong in that situation? Is it the restaurant owner or is it the customers? You know, I think neither one of them are wrong. You know what I'm saying? Uh, obviously, he wants to expand and try something different. Then maybe who's to say it? The hot dogs do good, and he can do hamburgers and hot dogs. You know what I'm saying? But 
the fans don't know that all the fans know is what they like and everything is so quick everything is so instant gratification now they don't have they don't have, and then they got so much they gotta do because you gotta work barely make enough so that you can pay the bills for what you gotta do for that day then you gotta go get you you gotta get you gotta come on you gotta spend time with your girl and if you got kids you gotta spend time with your kids you know all and you might even get time to yourself and that's, and that's the same thing if you come to your husband and your children, you know, so just stay with me, y'all. So you do all <laughs> that. And then, you know, next thing you know, it's fucking 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Oh, I gotta go to bed because like, I get up early so I can shower, get ready. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that. so when it comes to music and stuff, the only time they really can hear it is in the car. And so what's interesting was earlier you was talking about how it depends on what type of mood you're in, right? So you might not listen to it. If you're running, you listen to like a Don Q, whatever stuff like that. And I feel like that kind of applies here, is because that's the same thing to what people. Some people like that gangster music. King Von, that's all he knows. He can't. The thing is, if he would came out the gate rapping about Bentleys and splurging and tricking, which some rappers do, and they ain't living none of that shit, it's not authentic. Just rap about what you know. Fifty rapped about what he knew. That's one of my. He had his whole life. To write his first album, he had his whole life. He didn't put his whole life in his first album. So I was, and, and that's smart, artists. Don't put everything in your fucking first album. You know what I'm saying? Like, spread it out. Has some sustainability, at least till you fill out your contract. Have a plan. You know what I'm saying? Have a plan. I got so, my, I got my next four books already ready. That's what I, I just, I mean, that's just my opinion. Like the teachers on, but yeah, I just, I look at it like, if we were all operating under the same the same software i guess if i'm trying to say that right if we all kind of operate the same way and maneuver the same way we probably wouldn't have as much entertainment and content and it wouldn't be so diverse it would just pretty much be like copy and paste which the way we're headed it's not going to be as much as you're this way it's never going to i think the old days of everything being this or that is gone. I really do think it's just mainly just going to come down to a lot of gray area and being explored. And I think that's good. I think that's great. So with that, we still haven't hit two hours yet. So go with your story. <laughs> All right. So, oh, story. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, so with the violence part. And then I wanted to kind of do a rebuttal if I can remember my, my points on what you was just saying. You can do a rebuttal but, um, in the story. Yeah, back home. I already forgot it. So I, I got to talk my way back into it. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I passed this over. I don't know how far I made it. Yeah, I don't know how far I made it into this bottle, but I'm I'm pretty deep. Um, but yeah, it was it was a it was a record store back home. I used to go to every like every week i used to cop a a cd well like three or four cds and i found myself always getting the mainstream rappers obviously yeah and i'm just like i know it's a bunch of detroit rappers because if i'm not listening to a cd in the car that's how old i am i used to listen to cds in the car Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i would hear detroit rapper so i'm like yo like i knew that i knew the dude that owned the joint i was like who's popping in the dude so he gave me like four uh, CDs of Detroit rappers uh-huh. um, that was like the most popular at the time. And I was like, all right, bet. Put in the first one. All right, I'm good. Put in the next one. I think it was Obi Trice. I was like, okay, I heard Obi Trice. Now I'm on my way to work. I put in another one. Oh, shit. This is it. I literally was late to work because I drove like two exits past where I was supposed to get off to get to work showed up at work and I had to, my, me and my brother worked together and then um, I had to tell him I was like, my fault, man, but I was to such a song, so as a matter of fact, I not only missed my exit, I turned around and went back and got my, my brother a CD too, of the same shit that I was listening to, like no bullshit. I was like 30, 40 minutes late for work. Damn. So I gave him the CD or whatever and um, I was listening to it. And my other brother had pulled up in the parking lot later on that night and he heard the music. He was like, oh shit, I didn't know you fuck with old boy. I was like, yeah, man, I can't wait for his next album to come out. Cause he's talking that shit on here. Right. And he just looked at me. 
I was like, what? He was like, his next album. I was like, yeah, man, yo, this shit. Well, in today's terms, this shit lit. Yeah. Like, he talking that real Detroit shit, like, real straight Detroit West Side shit. I fucks with this. Right. <laughs> Our brother was like, he ain't making another album. Why, he got locked? He was like, nah, nigga dead. Damn. Like, wait, what do you mean he dead? Like, no, he just made no. This just this shit just came out. He was like, yeah, he just got motherfucker lit him up with an AK. Damn. I was like, yeah, he's talking about that shit on the album. He was like, yeah, after he got lit up with the K and the album came out talking shit, they heard it and then they finished the fucking job like mm-hmm. last week. What? And then he said the streets, and I was like, yo, I rolled past that. Like I literally rolled past the murder scene where he got got murdered mm. and I was just like what the fuck he was like yeah he was on an album talking shit and the motherfuckers that missed him the first time came back and got him the second time so I was just it it, it that that popped in my head talking about the whole violence thing because it was like this is back in the fucking 2000s and I know it's been going on longer than that but yeah. it's just it's just about? one of those things it's just <laughs> Like you get on the album, you get on the track, and you're talking shit about the opposition. It's like, well, so what do you expect them to do? Like, okay, you got goons, they got goons. You got soldiers, they got soldiers. You got guns, they got guns. You got vests, they got vests. So it's like, I know, I know it goes into gang culture. I understand that, but once you, I, I believe once you get into the industry, that shit should be irrelevant. Like, if you in this and you're making money, start moving your people as you can. And I've been saying this shit since I've been in the military. I said this shit to a lot of my soldiers. And when I talk to them one on one, they be like, because of how I talk and how I carry myself, they don't they don't know that I am who I am, where I come from. Right. So it's just one of those. I literally said this to a soldier one time. Fuck your family. Fuck your wife, fuck your kids. Do I care about them? Yes. But what what's more important to me? Me coming back home or you being able to spend more time with your kids? Motherfucker, I need you next to me. So yeah, fuck your family. And I just feel like you get to that point where like you can only help so many people that you can help back where you come from to where you just have to say, fuck them. Like, you're, you're providing an opportunity for them to get out and they don't want to take it. They don't want to come with you. They, they consider it to be fake or not being real or whatever it is. Mm. Well, then fuck them. I, I understand the gang culture. I get it. I got it. You can't drop your flag. You can't drop your colors. Is it worth your life? At that point, you made it. You're out. At that point, you have to look in, in the mirror and be like, is this shit worth it? Like I, I know I know what it feel like when somebody looking for me. I know what it feel like protecting somebody when somebody looking for them. That shit ain't fuck, man. It just hurts. Because you're not doing anything different to change your life. You think because you're making the money, fuck me. No, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I just literally, I just literally, I just literally been there, man. And then sitting up here and knowing somebody that's that loves life, that done what they, they did, what they had to do to get to where they are. I get that. And they made it, and something from the past comes up, and now shit changes, and that shit ain't cool, man. It, it's it fucking sucks having to sleep in a different bed every night. That ain't that ain't. That shit ain't cool, that shit ain't lit, that shit ain't But yet yet and still we keep perpetuating the cycle and nobody wants to change. And it's just like fine, like, alright, well Hey, guess what? You weren't platinum before you died, but now you are. So yeah, you just gave your family more money, but you ain't here to, to celebrate it with. Them. Is it worth it? No. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. It just no, I like you, man. like you can see, man. I, I apologize, but it's just one of those deals, no, man. Right. It just it sucks. It fucking sucks. Cause I'm sitting up here, I want to be a fan of King Von now, and now I can't because he ain't making no more music. 
No, I, I, I you might have one more album next year. Right, right. Like we get we get robbed of it, you know, the ones who like the new fans, you know. I, I get that. I just my only my only pushback is if if that, if you want to call it that. It's just that it's all these kids know. And Fuck that. that. It no, just, no. It, it no, takes no, no because like like I just said, like look at like nah, I'll take myself everybody is different. Example. Everybody everybody I, you I, but I, you're 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 I, you're I, I you're fikes. He's I, King Vine. I got you. He's I got pop you. smart. I, I got you. That's three different individuals. You know what I'm saying? At what point we, we sell ourselves so short? You know what I mean? Because it's kind of like, I don't know, because we came so dependent on technology, but it's like we sell ourselves short. And it's been like we we don't take accountability for stuff that we do. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, recipes to King Ron, whatever, like that. But, and I don't have an opinion on any of it because I have, it's nothing to do with me. But for I heard the story with the manager, he taught academics. And he broke down the story and he was just like he did something out of character and it cost him his life that's just how it happens it just happens like that you know what i'm saying if he was a country if he was a country singer and he was singing about chicago he had country songs about the hood that shit could still happen you know what i'm saying if he i feel like i feel like it, feel like it wouldn't happen and, and i only say that because of how the majority of us think that we're above the street and i might be saying this wrong but technically we like are, you're not above so you, you understand what i'm saying yeah we're about the streets you, 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 like like well no i'm not saying you and me i'm just saying like in no, general I'm, like, yeah, I'm talking about if you if you're all if black you're, people that that street mentality that the whole thing like i've seen this new trend thing they, they get like stop calling things that associated with black people's ghetto because that ghetto has a negative connotation to it i don't know if you heard about this little rumblings on twitter shit. no 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 what, what i'm saying is i'm looking at it from the standpoint of saying like when you say like, streets that mentality was you know killing each other and uh putting ourselves in harm's way and doing shit you know like that kind of counteractive to our whole movement. That's why I look at streets. When I, but then I'm no, I'm telling you, we're about that. But like, I'm as far at, as like us trying to get to where we're getting at and feeling that sense of community to where it's like, if you come in a broken home and maybe your mom's working three jobs and so you don't even see her, and let's see, like maybe your daddy got killed or yeah, he's not around or he's locked up or your brother or you know, whatever like that. And let's say you just, that's this community you have is gangbanging. But you're good at rap, and you're gonna find out randomly, and then you be like, "All right, cool." But the thing is, you did everything. I look at everything as like cause and effect, it's domino effect of life. Everything you do, if it's bad, eventually gonna come back to you, whether it's sooner or later. In my opinion, right? I think karma is a real thing. So if you've done things in your past. If you, if he, I said, King Von would have said, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna be just be a gospel singer, and he did all the things that he allegedly did that he spoke about in his songs, and he still acted the way he acted that night. He got killed. He still could have. He still could have died. You know what I mean? Pop Smoke. That's so, so Pop Smoke happens to. There are a lot of non-celebrities, rich people, or whatever, or people, not even rich people like that, who get killed trying to get robbed. Um. I mean, I'll let McPhee tell the story whenever she comes on, whatever. Hopefully, you on here. I'm about to, I'll, but she has a I'll story. That was a hit, though. She had a story, probably. I, I think it is too. But probably she has a story where her ex, uh, where her ex, uh, that was her ex. It wasn't her ex, but somebody she knew saw these guys robbing this old veteran at this one nice place in here in Atlanta and they were shooting and then she ended up having a gun and she shot back but she ended up being killed in the process you know what I'm saying so because the, the whole story behind Pot Smoke was supposed to be a robbery whatever and they were killing or whatever but I think it's a hit too but like I said I have no opinion on that because it's nothing to do with me but either way yeah, it's either way if, it, if, if what you're saying to is true then you would know what I'm about to say next is some you gotta take accountability for your actions, right? Go back, go back, go back. When you was talking about how you were saying that you think no, I'm hit. saying go back because you, you cut out. Oh, 
I was saying I'm, like, I'm just do this when you cut out. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Cause like I said, you keep freeze. I'm going to fix it though. Probably have to shut it down for a little bit. Um, yeah, because I'm dropping frames. So, right, top of, you said pop smoke. You said you thought it was like a hit. Now, if you. Yeah, the way it looked. The way it looked. Now, base, I don't know what you know of to give you that inclination. If you kind of know what I know or what I've heard, I'd say I heard and not know because it's all hearsay. Yeah, I got it. Then you got to understand where I'm going to head, where I'm going with this next. It's all about accountability. If. I give you that. You know what I'm saying? So. It's kind of like, yes, this stuff is sad, like, and like, we can wrap this up with all this because it kind of ties in everything we talk about from the guns to the masks to all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes, this stuff is bad. But at the same time, we have to take accountability for that. We can't stop. We got, and we got to stop looking at the exception as the rule. You know what I'm saying? And we do that even outside of that stuff. Like we, men, we do that with women. Like we treat them like they're the exception when they're the rule. Like we take these average, everyday, regular chicks that's just like all these other chicks, but we treat her the best. Why? Because maybe she can put some more than the other, other three. Or maybe she got money. Maybe yeah, she got I, good I credit. Maybe she might stuff. Oh, he just went out. He. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. So. Yeah, we'll get into that shit next episode. So this has been the LT Podcast. Thank y'all for watching. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all.